one of the things I'm on a wooden floor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my weight back and forth and watch what happens. This should show some sort of movement that is slight but will be a detriment when you are stacking the image. The computer program will make the image line up. There are programs that will even rotate the object, but the more shifting and the more rotating that you have to do, you will get less and less desirable results. You will lose sharpness because the computer program doesn't really know what's going on. It's doing the best it can. So let's sweep through this. It will go relatively rapidly. One, two, three. And you see that we're now on the far end of the opening in this rock and everything is now out of focus and I'll sweep back. And that is the thickness through which you're trying to capture an image. You have to estimate what is that distance and more importantly, how deep does the depth of field appear? And you can do this mathematically and scientifically. You could have a ruler set up with this operation and you could try to actually measure how deep the depth of field is. Let's start the sequence. And because this is about seven centimeters thick and there is some point of view, some place where you can see the side, I'm going to let it continue to photograph even through the area of interest until you get to the edge of the specimen. And I'll take eight photographs just to be on the safe side. And we will start the sequence. It's taken the first photograph in the first position. moving a centimeter every time you hear that little twisty noise. The device keeps track of how many photographs you have taken. Remember the first image is the starting position and then each one after that to get something that is seven centimeters thick you have to have seven more images after the starting position. We're in five. We'll collect three more just to be on the safe side. One last one coming up. This image shows reasonable brightness across the face of the specimen. I don't have a good separation of that specimen from the background by using two lights. And that's the point I'm going to show you what the result of this is. I'm not going to show you the process. That will be yet another tutorial. The concept of photographing is what is similar to what they have in art. It's called the lost edge. And believe it or not, when you get to be photographing and then editing this image, you find there are places where you have lost the edge because the background and the specimen have not enough contrast. Now I'd say, well, why don't you use a white background? Because when you photograph with different kinds of backgrounds, your camera's sensors respond differently. Perhaps the best color that you could use would be a medium gray. You could use a neutral color of almost any kind. You could choose anything that you want. I use black because that way it's easier to isolate the specimen. I can edit out the background quickly and then I can add a new background of my choice without having to have all of the things to worry about at once. I use the same conditions every time. So let's look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a highlight. The top edge of the specimen is going to be sharply in lighting. I'm going to adjust it so it's right on the top. I'm going to light the sides. 
I should tell you a little bit about the lights that I'm using while I'm setting this up. These are daylight balanced. They are 5,000 Kelvin lights. That is about the color temperature of daylight. The sides have an adequate lighting. I probably have enough light on the top. If I don't, I will discover that and I'll reshoot the sequence. I'll bring the lights in closer to get a better coverage of the surface. These are spotlights and they're LED lights. If you use LED lights, remember that not all daylight balanced bulbs give you a full spectrum of colors. Some of them will have a, an increase in one color on the spectrum over another. Maybe several colors will be poorly represented in the spectrum and you only have blue and red and by some idea in the mind of the manufacturer that represents daylight balance when the two of them average out. These are called Echo Smart. It doesn't matter what brand you get. The kind of bulb that I have is a daylight balanced bulb. That means it is about 5,000 Kelvin in color temperature. That's the way that daylight balance is measured. If you have bulbs that have 3,000 Kelvin, they're quite yellow, and that's more like you would have when you were using incandescent lights. They were very yellow. If you did any color correction in Photoshop, you realize that when you had very yellow conditions, you had to somehow remove that to make the subject look natural. Using 5000 Kelvin, you may still have to color correct. There may be color shifts of various kinds, but at least you have a starting condition that doesn't require a great deal of editing. You're not expecting the information about this image to change a great deal. You don't want to change images a great deal because they will look further and further from being so-called natural. The specimen is lined up just about right. I have the kinds of conditions I'm looking for. There's enough sparkle without being burned out highlights everywhere. You don't want burned out highlights. A few small ones will be fine, but don't try to make a picture look good that's got big areas that are almost mirror-like reflections. You can Cant the specimen slightly so the mirror light reflection diminishes so it looks like it's just brighter and has some transparency to it. That may give you a desired effect.